Today, we're looking at hedge fund performance, particularly AQR, which of course was co-founded by Cliff Asnes. Joining us now is Bloomberg's Shanali Basic, and Shanali looks like it was a pretty good year. It was a pretty good year. They were up 18.5% at their longest running strategy. You have to remember they were up well over 40% the year before, so that's two good years in a row. And what's interesting here to me about this story, again, a lot of these hedge funds have really trailed the S&P 500 and broader markets, but you did not see other trend followers have the same performance you saw over at AQR. For most of last year, CTAs were down on the year, according to Bloomberg's own indices. And that shows you that AQR and its convictions here, particularly when it came to the value trade, really held up. And the way they measure value is not the same as you see in a lot of places in the market. They don't look at, for example, tech stocks versus um, other types of value trades. They go within sectors, from what I understand and they, they look at cheap versus expensive within those sectors. So they have a pretty holistic way of looking at it. And uh, it is paying off for them, as well as a bunch of other strategies, including different commodity strategies they have, macro strategies. Yep. And it's put them above Guy, Citadel, and D.E. Shaw in multi-strategy performance last year. So I, th I, think CTA, I think the CTA story is really interesting. Again, it's getting too big to be nimble, and that's getting to be a bit of a problem. Yeah, but Citadel did okay. And Millennium did okay. And these guys, the big guys, are doing okay. Does that further concentrate this market? It, it certainly does. And you have to think about two things. Not just the fact that D. Shaw, Citadel, Millennium did well last year. Double-digit returns, right? You also have to remember that they did well the year before. And a lot of other funds you saw had really difficult uh, years leading up to last year and the rebound you saw uh, in 2023, which means that a lot of funds did not meet their, their hurdle rates here. So when it comes to paying people, where's where the money really hits the road here, this next couple months are going going to be very interesting to see the migration on Wall Street, because what will happen here is at funds that had a good last year, but not the years prior, are not going to be able to pay people the same way that these big multistrats have, which also, by the way, have pass-through fees. So they're charging their investors to pay their talent. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how this ends up playing out this year. Um, and also new allocations. Now that you have some dry powder, profits returned, you have a Citadel returning billions of dollars to their investors, it puts new money in the system to put to work towards hedge funds. I want to go back to the recruiting and pay conversation because I find that fascinating. Who are these hedge funds competing with for talent? Because we know that bank bonuses uh, have been a little bit depressing. Are they competing with private credit, someone else? What's going on? Yeah, uh, largely each other. Because mm -hmm. nowadays, if you look at it, yes, there's a lot of talent that have left the banks. Those talents have left for these big hedge funds. Uh, you think about Citadel, for example, where their co-CIO had come right out of Goldman's trading desks. Uh, very senior executive ranks. And so now you have them competing with each other. Remember, apart from the big funds that Guy was talking about, there is a lot of pain in the waters. Think about what happened with Schoenfeld at the end of last year, for example. Uh, yes, private credit is another interesting thing to look at, Katie, only because you have a lot of these large funds really considering what it means to compete in investing with private credit, particularly because some of these funds have pushed into fixed income. This makes a very complicated dynamic that I think will shape a lot of this year. If more funds move from public fixed income into private credit, then how does that distort the fixed income markets largely and the alpha you can squeeze out of trading fixed income? You have large funds. You had Ken Griffin talk about this to me yeah. late last year, really thinking about this seriously and thinking about what it means about their own exposure to different private markets.